Okay, so I'm gonna talk about something that I always I e ah e ah go geek ah mm, not so good. Fuck, who cares? I'm just gonna talk. All right, so we're talking about secondary emotions today, as you've probably seen in the title. What the fuck are they? Hold on. Um, yeah. To discuss secondary emotions are whenever you have emotions that take place of a current emotion, right? It's the re it's the byproduct. It's the result of a current state of feeling that you are in. So what does that look like? Um, one of the most common examples is when you break up with someone, right? Um, really, uh, like for example, you get cheated on, right? You catch, you walk in, see a girl, legs wide open, dude is, I mean, he's hitting it good, and he's cream pine the fuck out of her, right? So, naturally, that breaks your heart, that makes you feel small. It may, The primary emotion that you feel, the primary response, the primary feeling that leaves you with is that betrayal, that, um, that heartbreak. The sadness, has you feeling little, has your ego shattered. That's the primary, right? That is the base feeling, right? I know there's a lot of other emotions that just came to mind. That's secondary, right? Because the secondary is all that resentment. It's all that hate. That's all that rage. That's the fuck you motherfucker, right? That's that's the that's the anger. That's that hate. That's the um sometimes it's even the blame, it's the guilt. It's the, um, you know, there's tons of things that take place of that base primary pain. And there's a couple reasons why they come into play. One of them is, uh, cope is to help cope with the primary because sometimes when you get hit with that primary, it becomes so much for the body to even take. So the secondary start firing off as a result of it. In order to, in a sense, almost balance it out or counteract it, right? Now, regardless, I, I'm not playing, this is neither good nor bad, by the way. This is just pure response. Now, point I want to make, though, is you got to recognize, one, the difference between your primary and your secondary. Because if you start dealing, well, sometimes you have to deal with your secondaries in order to get to the primary, depending on how much they've counteracted and overtaken and essentially clouded over the primary. <sighs> oh, my breath feels weird today. I feel a little cold too. <laughs> um, right? So it's knowing that and it's also um, recognizing this is that your secondary emotions are actually a form of resistance to your uh, primary. Not always, not always, I don't think, but for the most part, they usually can't. They usually are, right? So, what's a, what's another scenario? I'll give I'll give you yesterday's scenario for me, right? I was I had like no energy. I just didn't have any drive, no ambition. I mean, like not not like I just needed something to get me up, like. I got up out of bed, I was trying to do everything I could, and I just could not bring my game to the table. I was like, I wanted to go A game, but I only had a D game, you know? So, like, I, I was I was awful yesterday, you know? So, it sucked for me to um, work around that. So, what ended up happening... So, what ended up happening... Was, um, what was I going to say? So what ended up happening is that as a result of the primary low charge, unmotivatedness, uninspired state I was in, I started to become very disappointed. Um, I started to get very frustrated with myself. I started to become angry. I started to become sad. All these secondary emotions started coming into play as a result of me being in resistance 
to my primary, which was unmotivated and uninspired to do anything with my life right now. Right? So, nothing went down. How long have I been recording? Right? So, recognizing it. Why do I bring this up today? Why do I bring this up? Because you have to recognize... Why do I bring this up? <laughs> Wait. Okay. So, now that we've discussed what secondary emotions are, it's now we got to recognize how to get you to your primary. Because if you start trying to work and operate based off of secondary emotion... You're going to be in a constant state of resistance or counteraction. Well, that's not even a word. You're going to be a constant state of, yeah, you're going to be constantly opposed against the way you feel. The way that's re the primary thing that's actually going on, right? The anger and the resentment is associated with you being in resistance to feeling the heartbreak and to feeling little and to feeling betrayed. Your anger is conflicted against that and it's taking it out on this person. Or maybe you have all the guilt, the blame, and the remorse going on yourself for, oh, I should have known. Oh my God, I'm such a fuck up. I can't believe I didn't see this coming. Oh my God, again, you know, that hits, right? Or, you know, disappointment for just not having it. I can't bring my A game. I'm not a genius. I feel like I'm not doing anything, right? You start to become disappointed, you start to put yourself down, you start to judge the fuck out of yourself, you feel frustrated, right? You start working off of that, and you're in a resistance to yourself. So you basically remain in this kind of stagnant state. So it's pretty, it's pretty much counterproductive. So what you need to do is, if secondary emotion, which likely it, it could be, usually kicks in when there's like big when there's a big primary emotional response to something right um another great another great scenario is anger right or sadness whenever you um you ever let's say you're just walking through the halls and you're anxious right and all of a sudden like well you got you get the point um but if you you work you work off that we have to get you to clear off your resistance we have to get you to recognize that the primary is the thing you need to allow to happen, right? That emotion, that primary state, that's what we want to get you to. And for as long as those secondary emotions are clouding that, you can't get to the primary as a result of your body's resistance, as a result of the... Um, Whatever it is that's sparking off these emotions in order to guard you or balance out from the primary's pain. So, what is what do you need to do? What do you need to do? First off, you need to clear out the secondary. And that's by recognizing whether what you're feeling is a result of a primary emotion or not, right? So, you... It's almost like it's it's a wall to the actual thing. So what you have to do, you can't just start beating away at this wall, right? Otherwise, it's really funny. You start trying to beat away at your secondary emotions, they reinforce more and more. And you almost, it almost becomes like a wall on top of a wall that's like fighting each other. So then, you know, you start beating on your anger, your disappointment. Stop feeling that way. No. And then you just build the wall more and more. Right? There's something like that. Like, the more you hurt it, the, the stronger it gets. Right? It was like, it's like Hulk. If you ever seen the first Hulk, where, like, all the tanks are shooting at him and shit. <laughs> right? You literally see, as he gets shot, he's, like, getting bigger. That's basically what you'll do if you start beating at your secondary emotions. What you need to do is actually allow the wall itself to crumble down. And that's by expressing that feeling. By expressing your secondary emotion. Is by accepting and admitting that you feel this way. Right? Whether it's secondary or primary is not the main concern. But it's recognizing that if you're going to cure. I mean, if, well, if you're going to heal the main wound. You have to be able to get rid of the wall surrounding that main wound, right? So you have to get familiar with the emotion. You have to feel the emotion. You have to express the emotion, right? And a very interesting thing about expression is that when you express an emotion and you allow the emotion to flow through you completely, 
That's when the answers come up. That's when all the things start to make sense. That's when all the messages that you were looking for, that you were trying to go all here for, they were all here. You just had to let it flow through, right? I don't know. Maybe that's just me. But allowing that to work within you, right? So what do you have to do, right? So first thing, first thing is expressing and listening to that anger, letting that anger come out of you, letting that frustration come out of you, letting that disappointment come and almost Almost listening to it and hearing it out and then letting it crumble down. And then once that once that wall crumbles down and you can really feel the primary wound, that's when you got to go deeper. So first goal is get the secondary wall down. Get the wall down by listening to what it's telling you, listening to its signal, feeling what the wall is making you feel feeling all those secondary emotions and allowing that to arise and express and then once that's arised and expressed within you and depending on how much you've reinforced this wall can depend on how many times on how much time you may have to spend with this emotion and whatnot before you can actually get to the primary right i remember when i was doing bioenergetic catharsis in order to um in order to break down actually to get to that primary wound that my ex was actually leaving me with um and i had been able to get to this primary wound a couple times but never as strong as i did until i started doing bioenergetic catharsis and actually allowing that to fully like go um right because i had all this anger this hate resentment and i was trying to reinforce like all these these secondary emotions were almost reinforcing myself so that I would tell, so that I knew, like I feared that if I forgave her, that I would, um, because my problem was I forgave, but I forgot. And, you know, if I, and I never really truly forgive, I just let it go and then we just start new. But the problem was is that you couldn't start new with this motherfucker because this motherfucker was lying, right? So, but we had all these, I had all these secondary emotions, resentment, anger, rage. I mean, like if I even thought about the, if I even thought about this woman, like, let's just say like I had some hysterical thoughts, you know, like it was wild, very ungrounded almost in a sense. So the first session I had was actually based on just getting that sec, getting all that rage and hate out of me. That was the first thing. Like, I couldn't even try and get down to the primary wound. I couldn't even try and get down to what my heart was feeling because I had all this blocked up energy and rage. Like, to the point where, like, I was getting muscle imbalances, dude. Like, I could feel it. So, I had to start letting that out. And for the first few, first session, I think even a little bit of the second session, it was really just letting the rage go. All that hate, all that resentment, just go, 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 right? Just rah, letting it take over what I wanted to do that motherfucker, right? And not holding that back. And then once I was able to express that and get that, allow that to, allow that wall to fall down, I was able to really start getting to the primary wounds, which left me really one of the big ones was, the big one was, um, you're not good enough for a woman. You know, you're not, you're not good enough to be like, that was really the most painful thing about it was that you're just not good enough for uh, women. That's how it made me feel like, not even in the sense that like you left me for someone else because I wasn't doing enough, but because who I am isn't worthy enough to be someone that you can love. That was, that was the wound it really left me with. And like, whoo, man, did that have me crying tears for lots of hours. <laughs> oh man. But you know, how long have I been recording? Yeah, I might cut off soon shit. I'm trying to like make sure it won't cut off me. I don't know how much time, you know, but right. 
it was letting that wall down. It was letting all of that stuff that I built up, reinforcing myself to give my reason, to give myself a reason to stay away from this motherfucker, to not get in contact with her, to not spend time with her, to kick her out of my life because it was difficult, man. And I'm not trying to get into stories of my ex, but the point I'm trying to make is that I built up all the secondary emotion around me and it took me a lot of time to build to, uh, it took me time to express that out and then get to the primary e emotion, get to what I was masking and resisting with my secondary emotion. What was I really feeling? I wasn't feeling hate and resentment. That wasn't, that was a result. That was me guarding. I was guarding something with resentment, hate, and rage. And I was guarding that wound. I was guarding what she had made me feel. I was guarding the 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 little bit of ego and dignity I had left that wasn't fra fractured, you know? And in a sense, my anger and my rage was had a goal to almost redeem myself. It wanted, but redemption wasn't, you know, like to the point where, you know, revenge was like the big thing. Like I had to get revenge on this motherfucker or something, right? All that secondary wall. You had to listen, and what I what I really really realized, because I was ignoring the secondary wall, and then I just kind of left it there, but I didn't do anything with it, so it just stood there, and I just stood here, and we did nothing. But when I started to listen to it and actually allow it to take take through me, the wall went down. Then I could get to the primary and allow that to go through me, and then through expressing it. And allowing the heartbreak to complete itself was when I was able to finally let it go. It was when I was able to finally have forgiveness descend upon me. When I was able to finally have understanding, self-closure, right? Through, a lot, through getting to that primary. But I, you don't just get straight to the primary. You have to let that wall take through you. Okay? So, something interesting I thought I would share. I kind of shared a more drastic scenario for you. A more drastic level scenario for you there. You know, this could even be something simple. You know, like yesterday scenario like I was bringing up earlier in the video. Where the disappointment and frustration and whatnot. You have to allow that wall to take through you. And then allow it to fall. And then when it falls... You can get to your primary feel. And when you get to the primary, you let that come through you. Right? There's the wall, and then there's what is protecting. You have to allow yourself to experience both. Never fight a wall. Never try and break down an emotional wall. Otherwise, it reinforces more and more. Always allow and feel the emotion or you end up blocking it up and then it goes nowhere and it's stagnant. So then what you're doing now is you're carrying baggage. You're carrying emotional baggage with you. And that, that really fucks up your life in a bad way. So you really don't want to do that. All right. So that's my video for today. Talk to y'all next time. I'm done.